The Greater Wellington Regional Council is being urged to establish a blue belt to protect the region's entire coast. The idea, similar to protections made by the city's green belt on land, is being pushed by a candidate running for council. Thomas Nash says it's the responsibility of the regional councils to safeguard Wellington's waterways and marine life. While many of the other candidates back the idea, some are concerned about its impact on fishing. Harry Locke has more. A blue belt for Wellington isn't a new idea. Environmentalists were campaigning for the City Council to implement such a plan in 2013. But the City Council says even though it's still on their long-term plan, it's been put down in the pecking order behind freshwater initiatives. Now the idea is getting political support at the Regional Council, with candidate Thomas Nash wanting to see the idea revitalised. Think about the, the green belt or the town belt in Wellington and, and that is essentially a plan for managing that land for various purposes. Obviously the, this blue belt would, would probably be less strict in terms of restrictions on activities but it would have the same purpose for uh, a really important resource that has intrinsic value for, for all of us to enjoy. The blue belt would extend for all 8,000 square kilometres of ocean the regional council presides over from Otaki on the west coast to Castle Point on the east. Mr Nash says the recent example of Mortiti Island in the Bay of Plenty has placed the onus on regional councils to cater for culturally and ecologically significant areas. In that instance, the local community approached their regional council, requesting several areas around their island were given a status of marine protected area. But when the council refused citing the Fisheries Act, that community took the council to court and won. Mr Nash says the outcome of that court case, which has since been appealed, means that regional councils have a responsibility to protect biodiversity hotspots and Manafenua interests in waters as they do on land. Technical advisor of the Mortiti Rohe Moana Trust, Teatarangi Sayers, says other communities will be heard because of it. I'm totally hopeful that this process will help communities inform the values that are significant to them. And for the first time, I think we we now have an opportunity as communities at, at a regional level to be able to inform the appropriateness of, of activities. In a written statement to RNZ, Chief Executive of Fisheries Inshore NZ, Dr Jeremy Helson, said the fishing industry is consistent in their support for measures that protect the marine environment. But he criticised Mr Nash for his interpretation of the Mortiti Island example. Dr Helson said the Fisheries Act, which Mr Nash described as favouring commercial fishing interests, remains the proper legal tool to manage adverse effects posed by fishing. Amongst fellow candidates, however, Mr Nash has the support of current regional councillor Roger Blakely. Restoring the fragile ecosystems on uh, rocky reefs, it could revive the abundance of sea life, uh, it could bring about more visits from whales and dolphins and penguins. Lots of benefits for the marine ecology of our coastal areas. Fellow councillor Darren Ponter says while he supports such a plan, the fishing industry needs to be considered. We do need to be conscious of commercial fishers, recreational fishers and recreationists, but we have found accommodations elsewhere in the country and there's no reason why we can't continue to do that in the Wellington region. Of the 23 candidates standing for the Wellington constituency alongside Mr Nash, RNZ spoke to 18. And while some said it shouldn't be a priority, nearly all of them were unequivocally supportive. For Checkpoint, Harry Locke.